ChatGPT has become the most popular language model in the world, and traders everywhere have been asking the same question. Can it actually build profitable indicators? Over the years, countless tutorials and blog posts have tried to answer this, but if you've ever watched one, you know the drill. They promise to finally answer this question, but then leave you more confused than when you started. So in this video, we're gonna cut through the noise. By the end, you'll know whether ChatGPT is truly capable of creating trading indicators and strategies, where it shines, where it falls short, and the structured process you should follow if you decide to use it. No hype, no secrets, just the real story. So let's get into it. The first thing you need to understand is that ChatGPT is a large language model trained on vast amounts of data. Why does this matter? Because when you ask it to create an indicator or strategy, it has to write that code in the logic of the programming language your platform uses. In this case, PineScript. As of today, TradingView runs on PineScript version 6. But here's the catch. Since version 6 is relatively new, ChatGPT may not have been fully trained on its updates, which means you're more likely to run into errors building on that version. So we would recommend sticking with version 5. It's been around longer, and the AI is far more reliable when coding for it. So the very first thing we want to clarify to the AI is that we will be building an indicator, and also that we'll be building it using PineScript version 5. This next step is where most traders slip up. They don't actually know what they want to build. They'll say things like, give me a buy and sell indicator that wins a lot, or create an indicator that detects news updates. But that's way too vague. If you want ChatGPT to help you, you need a clear and structured plan for what you're building. So here's the idea we'll use for our example. Every candle on a chart has a percentage change in price compared to the previous one. If you were to mark all of those changes as circles, green for bullish changes and red for bearish changes, you'd usually find they even out. Roughly half of the candles are bullish and roughly half are bearish. But what if instead, we plotted this data on a graph where the y-axis is the percentage change and we marked the midpoint at zero and now only bullish changes appear above the zero line and bearish changes appear below it? Then something interesting happens. You'll notice occasional outliers, candles with unusually large moves that separate from the rest. Our goal is to build an indicator that detects these anomalies because we believe those candles could signal powerful opportunities for reversal trades. So that's the overview of what we're building. And we'll feed this into our chat GPT prompt, but we're not done yet. The next step is to specify the details of the indicator so the AI knows exactly how to construct it. This is where a little knowledge of TradingView comes in. But don't worry, we'll break it down simply. On TradingView, there are two types of scripts, strategies and indicators. A strategy allows you to backtest. It can define entries, exits, and risk management rules, and then generate performance reports using the strategy test. An indicator, on the other hand, focuses on calculations and visualization. It can plot signals, lines, or oscillators on your chart, but it doesn't have access to TradingView's backtesting engine. In our case, we're building an indicator indicator, not a strategy. Now, indicators can be displayed in two ways, with overlays on, meaning the indicator plots directly on your price chart, or with overlays off, like an RSI or MACD. For this example, we'll keep it simple and build an indicator in its own pane, away from the price chart. TradingView has recently made it possible for indicators to combine both methods, but that's beyond the scope of today's build. Now, we'll expand our prompt further by specifying that the indicator should run with overlays turned off. After that, we'll give ChatGPT a few more key details about how the indicator should behave. First, we'll tell the AI that the indicator should allow us to select a different asset than the one currently on the chart, but by default, it should use the asset we're viewing. This will allow us to detect divergences using other assets. Next, the scatter plot of percentage changes should be plotted around a baseline of 0%. Any negative values below zero should appear in red, and any positive values above zero should appear in green. To make it more visually meaningful, we'll also apply a gradient. The larger the change, the brighter the color. Finally, we'll add one to three standard deviation bands around the scatter plot. These will help us quickly identify what's normal movement for an asset and what counts as an anomaly. To keep it clean, the bands won't have outlines. Instead, they'll be shaded zones with low opacity, green above the zero line and red below it. Now, this is also a rough sketch of what we expect this indicator to look like. This is not necessary, but if you have an idea of how 
you expect your indicator to look, you can include this image as part of your prompt to help guide the AI when designing the indicator. And now we have a pretty solid outline of what we want to build. So now we'll send this off to ChatGPT and see how it does. At this stage, you're likely to start running into issues. And that's exactly why we chose to build this type of indicator. It gives us a chance to highlight common problems you'll face and how to handle them. One of the first issues we encountered was an error that often shows up when you try to create an indicator that changes the asset you're viewing or adjusts the time frame. Now to keep things simple, we won't go into what the error means, but the good news is these errors are usually simple to fix. When receiving errors during the development process, we'd recommend taking a screenshot of any error you receive and pasting it into the same chat GPT window and let the AI know you received that error. Do this each time you get an error, and this will create a feedback loop where most of the time it will correct the problem for you after a few iterations. This process is something you'll need to get used to when developing indicators this way. However, it's worth noting that not all errors can be solved this easily. Some are related to the way the code is written, and those are trickier. They typically look something like this, and mention something regarding mismatch input. And for these errors, you will need to manually adjust the way the code is written, which does require some PineScript knowledge. But after working through those errors using the approach we just covered earlier, you should end up with an indicator that looks like this. As you can see, the AI built exactly what we wanted. It plots the percentage change of each candle, making it easy to spot those outliers with unusually large moves. And notice how often those candles line up with price reversals at that level. And if we go into the settings, we do have the customization options that we outlined. Now, in this example, we created a a brand new concept from scratch. But if you're building a more well-known indicator, like a MACD or RSI, ChatGPT will usually generate it with far fewer issues. In many cases, it can create these standard indicators without producing any errors at all. So that's it then. ChatGPT creates indicators flawlessly, as long as you use the feedback loop. Not quite. While the AI can handle simple, single-concept indicators, and even recover from errors if you feed them back into the loop, it completely falls apart when things get more complex. For example, ChatGPT can easily build something like a MACD. But if you head over to our free indicator library and look at our market sentiment technicals tool, you'll see the difference. That indicator combines several major indicators, analyzes multiple signals, and presents the output in three unique visual formats. No matter how detailed your prompt is, ChatGPT won't be able to build something like that from scratch. The AI also struggles heavily with indicators that require tables or multiple layers of logic. Another example is our reversal candlestick structure indicator. The idea behind this tool is to detect reversal patterns, but only in over bought and oversold conditions. Then calculate the performance of those reversals and display the results in a table so traders can see what's actually working. As you can see, there are multiple layers to this indicator. And right now, the AI simply isn't capable of handling something this complex. So while it's fantastic for testing smaller conceptual ideas, it's not reliable for building advanced multi-dimensional indicators. For that, you still need real PineScript expertise and a a strong understanding of the concepts you want to implement. And this shortcoming is even worse if you try to develop a strategy script to use the backtesting engine on TradingView. So what's the verdict? ChatGPT can definitely create indicators, but only up to a point. If you keep your ideas simple and conceptual and use the feedback loop we showed you, it can generate reliable tools that work right inside TradingView. But when it comes to more advanced, multi-layered indicators, the AI just isn't there yet. Now, if your goal is to move beyond indicators and actually build full trading strategies, that's where we recommend using our AI backtesting assistant. It develops strategies powered by three of our proprietary algorithms and gives you a ready-to-use script you can copy and paste directly into our backtester so you can develop in trade strategies proven to work. You can try it for 30 days risk-free over at luxalgo.com. And if you want daily market updates and chart breakdowns, make sure to follow us on X. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.